your first test against the Springboks as head coach. How exciting is that challenge for you, I suppose, given it is your first as head coach, but also um, it's such a strong rivalry that that we haven't seen for the last couple of years? Yeah, look, I think, I mean, you know, it, it feels to us with the amount of support we're getting that, that the whole of the country, you know, is really excited about playing South Africa again. And, and that's a mark of respect for them, isn't it? And... And, and we're no different, you know, it's, uh, we've had an eye on this, but we've also been, um, you know, we've known that we had to have done the job before in order to, to put ourselves in a position to, to one, win this championship that we're playing in, and to two, give us the, the right amount of confidence going into a, a big test against South Africa. A and we've done that. So we're, we're well positioned, but we're now going to measure ourselves against a team that's going to play a different game of rugby and, you know, we're excited by that. And the fact that it's got a, a hundredth tag on, it's going to make it even more special. You've um, you've faced South Africa a lot as an assistant coach, obviously, since you came in in, in 2012. What sort of Springboks team do you expect on Saturday, <laughs> particularly on the back of two losses to the Wallabies? Oh, look, I think their goal will be to be ruthless and clinical. That'd probably be the two words that I'd describe. They, um, you know, they're at their best when they... When they, foot, when they play a pressure game against you, when they play a power game against you. And it's not to say they can't do other things, but I think that's when they're at their best. And so I'm, we're, we're sort of preparing for a team that's been targeting this game and will come out with that focus. And, you know, we've got to make sure that in those two aspects that, 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 that we win that battle. So a uh, great challenge for us. Hi, Ian. Uh, can you just talk about how you came to select the, the back three and... and... Um, obviously, you've got a, a rich of talent there. What stood out for, for George Will and, and Jordy in giving them the nod this week? Yeah, look, tough decision on, on Sevu particularly because he's, he's played really, really well. And, um, but, you know, we probably felt that eerily the other two were, you know, slightly ahead in terms of being a bit taller and, and, and we are expecting a, a bit of the aerial battle. So that's probably came down to that sort of small margin, but that's not to say that Sylvie's not good in that space either. So um, tough decision, that one. And just on the, the halfback selection, TJ coming back obviously from Japan, what's he done to uh, edge himself ahead of uh, Brad Weber in that race for this weekend? I played well. It's quite simple, really. You know, like I've, um, I thought his last two tests have been, have been high quality and he, he went away and when we gave him a focus, he's come back and and he's really, I think, on top of his game at the moment. Played well. He's. I know we've got a, we've had a bit of front foot ball that's enabled him to operate, but he's been uncomplicated. He's been quick and and uh, and again, you, you couple that with his experience and some of his decision making. We've been delighted with his form. But you know, and like I said after the Perth test, Brad's playing really, really well too. So we've got a. We have got the we got the sort of choice that we want to have at the moment. Yeah, hi Fozzy. Um, hi. Can you uh, can you just update us? Was were Anton and Dalton unavailable? Just what state were they in as far as this week and selection, etc.? Yeah, look, like, there's a few dings. I mean, Anton's again is is very very close, probably at about ninety percent, but um, it wasn't close enough for us. Dalton's the same you know, with a, a high hamstring sort of strain. So they're both in the same category um, and probably have just missed out by a matter of days, I'd like to think. Um, and uh, and we had Hoskins who, who took a couple of heavy knocks on his leg and, and he was very slow to train at the start of the week. He's come back well now, but I mean, they were the main two that uh, were out with injuries. Oh, sorry, the other one is Angus Tarvel, who's got a calf strain. From the, from the start of the week. And just in terms of your tight five, um, it's, you know, with the backup you've got on the bench, um, it's a real one-two punch you have there. Um, you know, those, those, those four guys on your bench could easily slot in and start and have done, have started a lot of tests, that, well, apart from Sam Sony, of course, he's playing very well. How important is that depth, is that one-two kind of punch aspect going to be in a test, attritional test like this, like you expect it to be? Oh, it's really important. I mean, the modern game is about 23 and, um, you know, it's a, 
uh, you know, it's it's very likely that, you know, those guys will get injected maybe even a little bit earlier than expected. We'll see how the game flows. But, um, you know, you got to, you know, we're, we're excited about the depth that we're growing in that space. But you've also got to flip that over and saying uh, when you look at the, the guys coming off the bench for the for the spring box is that they've got a very strong bench too and it's something that they've really worked hard on so you know i think that uh that i think the second half tactics are probably going to be as, as interesting as the first half ones thanks just one last one um slightly off topic but not really will rugby and international players have introduced new guidelines that um, have recommended setting a limit of 15 minutes for a week for full contact training um, given you're, you're preparing for probably the most physical team in world rugby, is 15 minutes a week of full contact training enough at this level? Well, I haven't heard that. So uh, you're obviously a step ahead of me, Mark. So that's the first I've heard of that. Um, 15 minutes, I would say, wouldn't be, uh, would be about right. You know, gut feel. I, I would say, um, you know, depends what you'd classify as full contact, but... Um, it sounds about right to me. Thanks, Joe. Good day, Ian. Hey, I'm um, just looking at selections across the board. Obviously, a lot of informed players. But for a game like this one, how, how big a factor was sort of experience in picking guys like Paddy over Tupo and, and you know, Carl Tunukuafe over George Bauer and, and across the team, really, in a, in a big game? How important is that experience? Yeah, I, I, I think it's it, it certainly weighed on our minds, um, particularly with a a number of players in the last two years haven't actually played South Africa and you know the fact we've got two in a row against them and so you know really you know we, when we look at form and we look at the the things we need to do on, on the game and, and how we need to counter them that's uh, the number one criteria but certainly the, the the players experience to deal with what will be a big occasion it is another one. But, you know, the guys that you mentioned, for example, the likes of George and Tupo, have, have already played a, a few big tests in their very short career and show that they can deal with that as well. So, um, you know, we're, we're pleased that we're building enough experience in this group slowly that, uh, that that doesn't become a factor at selection time. Right. And just on what you mentioned there with a lot of guys playing the first games against South Africa, I know in the lead up to a Springboks test, you know, a lot of focus is, is on sort of what, you know, that, that old enemy kind of thing. And, and you teach players about that kind of rivalry. But when it's their first game against South Africa and obviously everyone's first game in a wee while, uh, just sort of more emphasis go on, I guess, the kind of different style of play that South Africa bring to the test arena? Yeah, more, more emphasis goes on the, the style rather than the, um, you know, the, you, you, you use the word enemy. It's not the word that we used. It's uh, We probably use the word respect. And um, and I've earned that, and so it, it's more about understanding the style that we're going to come up against, and um, it's it's one of the the beauties of the international game is that you play teams with very very different styles, and and the number of players that we've had of if you look at the last eighteen months, you know we've we've predominantly played a, a couple of teams with a, a very similar style, so it's actually nice now to get into a a different one and. And, you know, clearly it'll be a style that um, it'll probably take us a little while to adapt to, but we, we hope that, that we adapt very, very quick. Thanks, Joe. Um, yeah, Ian, just two quick ones. Um, I guess the perception of the box has changed drastically um, over the past two weeks with those losses to Australia. You know, they're the world champs and they beat the Lions in a, in a pretty dire series, but having lost those two games, uh, perceptions of them have changed. What What's your... Uh, view of, of uh, where they're at? Oh, look, I, I can only plan and expect them to be at their best, um, you know, and I think we've seen signs of that um, through the Lions series. We, you know, I know we use the word dire and all that sort of stuff for that series, but let's face it, uh, it's always a big series. It's a pinnacle event and and they won it. And, um, you know, the style, the style of the win was probably irrelevant in many ways in those sort of series. So, We've got to give them credit for that. They've looked a little bit flat since then. Um, but, uh, you know, and they've come out of quarantine and played a fast team that's really gone at them. So oh, I think they're, they're very experienced. We're expecting them to have learned a lot the last two weeks. And there's a lot on the line for them. And there's a lot on the line for us. So, you know, both teams need to be at their best. And that's what we're preparing for. 
And just in terms of your team, I guess you've had to deal with the rugby championship being moved to Aussie and the whole baby scenario, but um, things have mostly gone to plan. You've been able to rest and rotate and squads in, in reasonable shape. So are you, in a, from a team perspective, in a better place than you thought you might have been at this juncture? Yeah, look, we're, we're feeling strong at the moment. And it's, you know, we've made some decisions. that There were there was a strategy that we went into the series with. And and clearly, you, you always have to adapt your strategies. And, you know, we've... But I think the work done behind the scenes in terms of the player management and the and the training loads and how we how we monitor and, and use the contact session and maximize them by whilst minimizing the time doing it has been key. So, you know, you make your own luck in some ways and, and we've had a little bit, but um we're in a good place. The, the squad's, you know, really bouncing around. We we can't wait to get on the plane and go to Townsville and and get ready for what what will be a very very big stage for us, and you know the chance to win this championship and to buy and and to have to climb over South Africa to do it is a pretty special occasion for us to test ourselves. Hey, I'm not by any stretch suggesting you're going to lose this weekend, but I was wondering if you can draw any parallels between the nine uh, 2019 semi final against England, having not played them for a little while. Um, a one-off game that they'd been really building up to think about South Africa in a similar position. Are there any parallels at all you can take from that test and, and the way you approached it? Yeah, oh, that might be a question you might ask me after the game, Joe, just to see, if, see how right I was. But it's, um, oh, look, I, I think there are some parallels. I, I think you, you're quite correct in, in what you're saying. I think both teams, I think England certainly had targeted us for a long, long time and prepared for that. And we've got no doubt that um, South Africa had, had a plan for a, a long time for this game too. So I think what we have learned is that um, we need not not to be surprised with the intensity of the opponent's build-up and not to get um, not not to get lulled into a sense of their, their previous few weeks and the previous form and think that's going to be an indicator of what's going to happen on Saturday. That that's the biggest lesson out of England.